Today we're going to talk about 1.5 quadratic equations. We're going to talk about how to solve quadratic equations by factoring the square root property, completing the square, the quadratic formula. We're going to use the discriminant to determine the number and type of solutions. Determine the most efficient method to use when solving a quadratic equation. And solve problems model, model by quadratic equation. So a quadratic equation is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. a, b, and c are all real numbers and a cannot be equal to zero. A quadratic equation in x is also called a second degree polynomial equation in x. So the first method I'm going to talk about is solving a quadratic equation by factoring. To solve a quadratic equation by factoring, we apply the zero product principle, which states that if the product of two algebraic expressions is zero, then at least one of the factors is equal to zero. So if you have a times b equal to zero, that means either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. So these are the steps to uh, solve by factoring. Rewrite the equation so that it's in the general form of ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. Factor completely. Apply the zero product principle. And you do this by setting each factor containing a variable equal to zero. And then solve the equations. And you can also check your answer. Now I'm not sure the way you were taught how to factor. Um, this class did not start off with factoring. It started off with imaginary numbers. So it's either assumed that you know how to factor. I'm going to show you the way I factor, um, but you factor the way you feel comfortable. So in this problem, we have x squared plus 5x plus 6 equal to 0. So we know that a is 1, b is 5, c is 6. So this is already in, in general form. There's no number in front of this x squared except the 1. You just don't see it. So when you factor this, you need to find two numbers that multiply uh, to give you C, whatever C is, and add to give you B. So two numbers that multiply to give you C, in this case C is 6, those same two numbers have to add to give you 5, that's our B. So two numbers that multiply to give you 6 and add to give you 5 would be 2 and 3. 2 times 3 is 6, 2 plus 3 is 5. So now you can factor this into x plus 2 times x plus 3 equal to 0. You use these two numbers to do your factoring. And then you're going to set each one of these factors equal to 0 using the zero uh, product rule. So x here is equal to negative 2 x here is equal to negative 3. These will be your two answers. Now when some people factor, they don't go, they don't go through this table method that I did. You can Some people factor by uh, trial and error. It's up to you. Alright, so this next one is 2x squared plus x equal to 1. We need to rewrite it in standard form. So this will be 2x squared plus x minus 1 is equal to 0. In this case, a is 2 b is 1, c is negative 1. Now this is going to be factored a little different, differently from the problem above because in this case we have a number in front of the x squared. So we're going to factor by grouping. So what you want to do first is multiply a and c. So in this case it's 2 times negative 1 which is negative 2. Next we want to find two numbers. that when multiplied, they give you whatever AC is, whatever your product is for AC, and add to give you B. All right, so we want to find two numbers that when we multiply, we get negative 2, because that's what we get when we multiply A and C. We want these same two numbers to add to give you B. B is 1. So two numbers that multiply to give you negative 2 would be negative 1 and 2. When you add negative 1 and 2, you get 1. So now there's an extra step here. We're going to rewrite this middle term here, this x up here, using these two numbers. So this is going to be 2x squared minus 1x plus 2x minus 1 equal to 0. 
Now you have four terms. You're going to factor by grouping. Okay, so let's look at this first group and see what we can factor out. It looks like we can factor out an x. When we factor out an x, we're left with 2x minus 1. In the second group, the only thing that's common in both of these will be a 1. When we factor it out, we're just left with the same thing, 2x minus 1. So now you have this binomial 2x minus 1 that's common in both terms. We're going to factor that out. You're going to be left with x plus 1 and this is equal to 0. Alright, so now we're going to set 2x minus 1 equal to 0 and x plus 1 equal to 0. Here we're going to solve for x. I get x is equal to a half and here I get x is equal to negative 1. So those are my two answers. Now some advantages with uh, solving quadratic equations uh, via factoring is, is great if the equation is factorable, but not all equations are factorable. Okay, So now this is a U-try problem. I'm not going to do the an uh, problem, but I'm going to write out the answers. I get x is 3 and x is equal to negative 1, 3. So you can see if you can try those on your own and see if you get those answers. So now we're going to talk about how to solve equations by the square root property. Um, quadratic equations in the form of u squared equal to d, where u is an algebraic expression and d is a non-zero real number, can be solved by the square root property. So um, it has exactly two solutions. What you do is you take, in order to get u by itself, you have to take the square root of both sides. You end up with u is equal to the square root of d, or u is equal to the negative square root of d. Okay. All right, so let's look at this problem. We have 5x squared plus 45 is equal to 0. We want to solve for x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get x squared by itself. The first thing I'm going to do is subtract 45 from both sides. Next, to get x squared by itself, I divide by 5. I get x squared is equal to negative 9. To get x by itself, I need to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of x squared here is x. Don't forget the plus minus here. Negative 9 can be broken down into negative 1 and negative 9. You take the square root of both. You end up with i. Square root of negative 1 is i and the square root of 9 is 3. So you can write it as x is equal to negative 3i and x is equal to positive 3i. So you'll have two answers. <clears throat> this is a you try problem. You try this on your own. You should get x is equal to 5 and x is equal to negative 5. <clears throat> now we're going to talk about how to solve the quadratic equation by completing the square. I do not like completing the square and I do not recommend this method, but it works. I just don't like it. <laughs> so let's look at this. Um, if x squared plus bx is a binomial, then what you can do is you can take half of your b, it's coefficient, take half of b and square it, and then you're going to add it to both sides. This side here will turn into a perfect square trinomial, which, which factors into x plus b squared squared. Okay, so it seems like a lot of work, and to me it is. That's probably why I don't like it. But So I'll just show you one that's really simple, but these can be complicated, especially when you get into fractions. So in this problem, we have x squared plus, uh, f sorry, plus 4x minus 1. So we need to rewrite it so that it is a binomial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I get x squared plus 4x is equal to 1. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of the b. b in this case is 4. So I'm going to take half of 4, which is 2. And then I'm going to take that 2 and square it. And I get 4. And then I'm going to add it to both sides. So you end up with x squared plus 4x plus 4 
is equal to 5 because 1 plus 4 is 5. So this here is what you call a perfect square trinomial. Two numbers that multiply to give you 4 and add to give you 4 would be 2 and 2. So this factors into x plus squared, sorry, x plus 2 squared is equal to 5. All right, so you want to get x plus 2 by itself. So what you need to do is you're going to take the square root of both sides. You're going to get x plus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. You can't take the square root of 5. Just leave it as is. And then you're going to subtract 2 from both sides. So you end up with negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. So you basically get two answers, negative 2 minus the square root of 5 and negative 2 plus the square root of 5. Okay. So like I said, this can get messy when you start working with fractions. So if I show you real quick, for this problem, x squared plus 5x is equal to 7. Um, the first thing, we already have it where this is this is a binomial. So what you're going to do is you're going to take half of 5. You get 5 over 2. Oops, 5 over 2. And then you're going to take 5 over 2 and square it. You get 25 over 4. And then you got to go through the steps of adding it to both sides. And then, you know, I'm not going to work with these fractions. This is this is this gets ugly. Okay? So I would not recommend this this method. Okay. So this is a U try problem. Um, the answer for this one is x is equal to negative 3 minus the square root of 11 and x is equal to negative 3 plus the square root of 11. So you can try that one on your own using the completing the square method. The next method is the quadratic formula. The solutions of a quadratic equation in the general form of ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, where a is not equal to zero, can be given with the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all, all over 2a. The quadratic formula works for any method, anything. Okay, so if you don't want to complete the square, if you don't want to factor, whatever, the quadratic formula works for it all. So this is the method that, that I ask that you use. Even on your homework, if it asks you to complete the square, you don't have to. You can just use this method right here. Okay, now on my test or on my quizzes, I may, I may ask you to do it a specific way, however. Okay, but in this case, let's go ahead and solve with the quadratic formula. We have 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 equal to 0. a is 2, b is 3, c is negative 2. We're going to plug everything back in to the quadratic formula. We get 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 2 all over 2 times 2. That's all I did. I just plugged everything back in. Let's go ahead and simplify this. The stuff underneath the radical will be 9 plus 16. Let's simplify that even further. 9 plus 16 is 25. And so now I have two answers I can work with. I get x is equal to negative 3 minus 5 all over 4. And x is equal to negative 3 plus 5 all over 4. So this would be negative 8 over 4, which is negative 2. That's one answer and this would be uh, negative 3 plus 5 is 2 all over 4. This would be a half. So you got two answers. See how nice and simple that is? Alright, let's try this next one. 2x squared plus 2x minus 1. And this one a is 2, b is 2, c is negative 1. Let's plug everything back into the quadratic formula. All right, let's go ahead and simplify this. 
you get negative 2 plus or minus 4 plus 8 all over 4. This simplifies into negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 12 all, all over 4. The square root of 12 can be broken down into 4 and 3. And we know that the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so I have negative 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 3 all over 4. Now let's look at these numbers here to see if this can be simplified further. As you can see, 2 is common in both. So if we factor out a 2, I'm left with a negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 all over 2. So I divided each one of these numbers I have in circles by 2. And I'm left with this answer. So you get two answers negative 1 minus the square root of 3 all over 2 and negative 1 plus square root of 3 all over 2. Now in my math lab it may ask you to write it where they break it up so it may be written like this negative 1 half minus square root of 3 all over 2. So this might be how it'll ask you in my math lab. Okay. But like on my test or my quizzes, this is fine right here. All right, let's do another problem. We have 9x squared plus 12x plus 4 is equal to 0. A is 9, B is 12, C is 4. Let's plug everything back into the quadratic equation, the quadratic formula. I get this, 4 times 9 times 4 all over 2 times 9. So let's go ahead and simplify this. I get 144 minus 144. So the underneath the radical turns out to be 0. Underneath the radical is 0. So basically you're left with negative 12 over 18, which can be simplified. Um, we know that 6 is common in both, so the 6 is cancel out, so I'm left with a negative 2 thirds. Okay. And then let's do another one. This is the last one we use in the quadratic formula. We got 3x squared plus 4x plus 2 is equal to 0. A is 3, B is 4, C is 2. Let's plug everything back in. We get 4 squared minus 4 times 3 times 2 all over 2 times 3. Let's go ahead and simplify this. We get 16 minus 24 all over 6. Let's go ahead and simplify this further. 16 minus 24 is negative 8. And let's go ahead and break that down. Negative 8 can be broken down into the square root of negative 1, 4, and 2. So that leaves me with negative 4 plus or minus 2i, because this is i, this is 2, times the square root of 2 all over 6. Now let's look on these at these numbers on the outside, or the ones that I have circled, to see uh, what's common in all three, if we divide each one by 2, this will simplify. So this simplifies to negative 2 plus or minus i square root of 2 all over 3. You can write it as two separate answers. This is one answer and this is the other answer. All right, so the advantages of the quadratic formula, like I said, it works with any quadratic equation. As you can see, we have i's in here. We have uh, we can have answers with radicals in it. Or you can have two real solutions. It works with everything. All right, so next we're going to talk about how to use the discriminant to determine the number and type of solutions. So the discriminant is what you see underneath the quad, uh, the radical sign in the quadratic formula is b squared minus 4ac. If you calculate the discriminant and it's positive, you have two real solutions. 
If the discriminant is zero, there is only one real solution. And if the discriminant is negative, you have two imaginary answers. So let's go back to these previous problems. Um, we have 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. My a is 2, my b is 3, and my c is negative 2. I'm going to plug everything back into the discriminant. I get 9 plus 16, which is 25. This is a positive number, so that means I have two real solutions two real solutions. So I did this problem before. This was the first problem that I did. So if I scroll back up, it was this one right here. It's the same problem. As you can see, I got x is negative 2 and x is a half. I have two real solutions. Okay. Let's go back. Let's go to this next one. 9x squared plus 12x plus 4. A is 9. B is 12, C is 4. We're going to plug everything back into the discriminant. I get 12 squared minus 4 times 9 times 4. I get 144 minus 144, which is 0. Since this is 0, I have one real solution. That means I'm only going to have one answer. So I already did this problem, and that was this problem here. And as you can see, I only got one answer. X is negative 2 thirds. Okay, let's do another one. The 3x squared plus 4x plus 2. Um, A is 3, B is 4, C is 2. I'm going to plug everything back into the discriminant. I get 4 squared minus 4 times 3 times 2. That gives me 16 minus 24, which is negative 8. So my answer is negative. That means I will have two imaginary numbers. So if we scroll back, I did this problem here. And as you can see, I got imaginary numbers in my answers. I have I's in my answers. All right, so I want you to try this problem on your own. I will tell you that the, they want you to figure out the solve by using the quadratic formula. So you're going to solve for x. But first you're going to figure out how many solutions you're going to have. So in this case, let's see. I will tell you that the discriminant calculated to be 25. And when you actually do the quadratic formula, these are your answers. Okay, this last problem talks about a real world problem. And it says the formula P is equal to 0.01a squared plus 0.05a plus 107 models a woman's normal systolic blood pressure, P at age A. We're going to use this formula to find the age to the nearest year of a woman whose blood pressure is 115 millimeters Hg. All right, so we were, we're going to solve this equation. For, we're going to solve using this equation. So they said P represents the blood pressure. So in this case, this case the blood pressure is 115. We want to find the age A. So we're, we're trying to solve for A. Okay. So this is a quadratic equation. As you can see, we have A squared, and then we have an A, and then we have a number. We're going to rewrite this so that we have zero on one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 115 from both sides. So you get 0.01a squared plus 0.05a minus 8 is equal to zero. So now we can go ahead and figure out our a, our b, and our c. So we're going to use these numbers and we're going to plug it back into the quadratic equation. This time I'm going to use A, the big letter A, since that's what we're solving for. And in the other problems we had X's, but in this case we have A. So let's go ahead and plug everything back in. So you're going to be dealing with a lot of decimals here.
Okay, so when I simplify this, this is what I get. So I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of uh, three point sorry point three two two five I get zero point five six seven eight all over zero point zero two so when we do it here I'm going to add it. I get A is equal to 25.89 and when I do it here I'm going to subtract it I get negative 30.89 so the thing here is this deals with age so you cannot have negative age so this would not work this is the only answer that will work because it's positive so we need to round this up it says found it found, round it to the nearest year so in this case A is 26 All right, that's the end of this lecture.